Hi everyone, so today's look is sort of a, pink, a pinky, corally, bridal, bronzy look. It's supposed to mimic um, On the Bridal Path um, hibiscus flower. So it's just a bridal tropical flower. Um, and I just really wanted to mimic it. I thought it'd be very pretty. Um, it is uh, sort of a more bridal pink look than the typical pink look you'll typically see. Um, and I really hope that you enjoy it. If this is too much for you for your wedding, you can always tone it down. If you would like this look, it's really beautiful for Breast Cancer Awareness Month or just any time you want to wear sort of a pink uh, kind of flattering look. So I really hope that you enjoy this. I'll have, you know, the my inspiration as a thumbnail. And um, yeah, if I were to get married, I'd want that whole tropical theme and sort of the tropical-esque colors. So. Like I said, I hope you enjoy, and there'll be some uh, wedding tip tricks along the video link. I'm going to take a little bit of Urban Decay Primer Potion in Original, and we're just going to go ahead and put that all over our eyelid, and a little bit underneath the eye, and we're just going to go ahead and pat that in. Now if you're a bride, clearly you're, you are going to have to wear an eyeshadow base just for perfection. I'm going to take a little bit of Grade Primer Potion and this is absolutely gorgeous. It creates this sort of lightweight sheen on a bride. It's just amazing. You can also take uh, Too Faced Candlelight. I've put that on brides. This is just safer for me because I'm allergic to Too Faced, but beautiful look for your bride. Now for the brow bone, I just put a little bit of NYX Dream Eye Pencil and Milk and placed that underneath the brow bone. And then just blend it out and down. Just so it has a really soft sheen or cast of white, not like blatantly white. And you can always just take off any extra that you ended up having to smudge out later on. I'm going to go ahead and take a bronzer for the contour, something very warm. I'm actually taking MAC Spring Sheen Shine, yeah, Spring Shine blush ombre. It's got all the different kinds of golds, but you can take any bronzer. Um, Too Faced makes a, a bronzer that's very similar to this color. We're just going to take the area in the center because I just want it to be very warm. You could also take um, the Vanity Palette, take a very warm, warm, warm color. Um, MAC Saddle's very warm or any dupe of that. Inglot makes tons of warm neutrals and they recently came out with a bunch of them. So. Just gonna blend that into the outer corner and pull that in. This particular blush is no longer available. It came out with Spring Color Forecast for Amber. Okay. Now for the center of the crease, we're gonna take that light shade. If you have like a bronzer set or a couple of bronzers with different intensities, this is a fairly easy look. Even if you had Wet n Wild's Princess, and goddess bronzers, you could do this. But I know that they're coming out with um, like a sort of a bronze collection from Wet n Wild, so. And they also have those bronzers that come like with the three separate slots of like different kind of tonalities. That would also be a good one. I'm just gonna completely fluff this out. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of Max Orb or any, you can even take like a concealer powder color, a setting powder color, and we're just going to blend that out. You don't really want the NYX Dream Body Pencil and Milk to be like super visible. It's just meant to sort of brighten up the arch of the brow bone to create sort of like a brightness from within look. So I just took care of that right away before the crease sits too long and becomes harder to blend out as we move up and along.
So just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of MAC Expensive Pink. You can also find sort of these pinky, pretty, uh, you know, pearlescent colors in, you know, drugstore blushes. So we're just gonna go ahead and blend that out on the lid. You can take Wet n Wild's blush in pearlescent pink. That would be really pretty. The Wet n Wild Petal Pusher palette has some pretty pinky plumbing colors too. I'm just taking what I have and being creative because I have all this makeup sometimes I just let it sit around if it's not cruelty free which kind of isn't fair to the makeup or my budget. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of MAC Sushi Flower and it's just this really pretty satin-esque pink. It's going to be perfectly soft enough to do this particular look. So I'm going to go ahead and take that same brush. You don't need 20 million brushes to do your face. Just a nice hint of pink. If you're getting married in the tropics or your honeymoon is in the tropics, you just want that pop of freshness. This is just going to be just enough color so that you still maintain your bride-esque stature. Which I agree is very important because you only have one day out of your life to look bridal, but you have the rest of your life to wear dramatic smoky looks. So in the outer corner a little bit, up into the crease part way, about three quarters of the way. And if you have a very small eye, I would maybe do less than three quarters. Now sometimes the throats of hibiscus flowers aren't extremely deep in color. Sometimes they're actually the color of the petals. Um, just for the sake of creating a little bit of an intensity to sort of polish off the eye, I'm going to be adding a little bit of purple as if to say that the deep pinky fuchsias are sort of melting into, you know, um, sort of a purple towards the throat of the flower. So in order to achieve that, I am going to use a little bit of Max Plum Dressing, which looks like this beautiful purple color right there, right here. So it's got tons of pink in it, so hopefully that'll keep us um, from getting too purple. So I'm just going to go ahead and dab on a little bit of Plum Dressing. I'm going to first start tapping it on in the outer corner just so I can get the placement I want. If you're not wearing this to a wedding and you want to like pop it up a bit, then you know, go for vibrant mattes or whatever from Sugar Pill, but I think you could wear this out if you want, but it it is actually very soft and subtle. So I'm just taking that and just softly blending it once I place the color. So you can see it adds a little bit of dimension to the eye without um, giving it a purple look. Now a lot of, I know a lot of people tend to have the exact same comments about pinks and purple eyeshadow making them look sick. So we're just going to take a little bit of Aqua Eyes Makeup Forever number one pencil. Uh, we're going to add all that black around there just so that the pink and the purple don't stand attention and sort of make the eye look sickly. I have hazel eyes, so it's a recommended color for me, which is, uh, you know, it's odd. But I'm just going to add a little bit of that black to the eye just so that it's got sort of a partition between the pinks and the purples so you can avoid that. Take any waterproof liner just in case. Even if you're not sappy, um, you might be sappy on your wedding day, I don't know. So just because it's a moment for you. I'm just going to add a little bit of that just to darken the eye. Don't go overboard. And that'll also make your lashes look more intense by tight lining. Now just to keep the look a little earthy and so it doesn't get too harsh because I think it could easily go there, I'm going to take a little bit of MAC Super Slick Liquid Liner in Defiantly Feline and we're going to go over the upper lashes. Now any brown liquid liner will do. These aren't limited edition anymore. I know Urban Decay though is selling something super similar to what these were when they came out. These were sort of known as the liners that peeled off when you tried to remove them.
Also, the Urban Decay ones are waterproof, so I'd probably go for that over this, but I am just taking what I have. So that creates an intensity without going black. I'm going to take a little bit of Shroom by MAC, and we're going to get this color into the inner tear duct. You could take uh, brulee or sugar from Went Wild if you'd prefer. I'm going to take that into the inner tear duct and pull it up. There's a dupe of this color inside the Too Faced like, neutral eye palette. It's just any kind of shimmery white that has like a low intensity color payoff for the most part. And sometimes that low intensity color payoff works. So I just flicked the excess pink pigment out of my brush and then we're just applying that. Sometimes when you take a dirty brush carefully, it'll help the colors blend together well. Just make sure it's not so dirty that it's interfering with the look or making it muddy. I'm just going to also apply Shroom to the arch of the brow bone. I'm going to apply a set of Demi Loveys to complete the look since these are sort of, you know, love loveys. But um, I don't recommend taking loveys if you can't find these because they're really like insane. They're going to totally take over the sweetness of a look. If you can't find these, I recommend Demi Wispies in black or brown or even the Demi 120s. Anything Demi or accent lashes are very beautiful for weddings. Now once you top off the eyes with those, you'll definitely want to start considering what foundation you're going to wear. Now when it comes to bridal looks, whether you're inside or outside, you don't want something that maybe has a high intensity of mica, is mineralesque, or has sunscreen in it, because what can end up happening is the flash photography can really ruin sort of the actual like lifelike appearance. In person, you might think, wow, I look incredible. But when you go to take a picture, you'll end up with a ghost face, and that's absolutely not what you want when it comes to your bridal photos. So when it comes to uh, certain foundations that I know work well on camera, I really like the Too Faced Amazing Face Oil-Free Close-Up Coverage. Um, I know the Makeup Forever HD one, a lot of people love that as well. Uh, obviously, I can't recommend it because I've never worked with it, and it's um, makeup forever. So at the end of the day, you have to decide kind of for yourself what you want. Ask around, but just keep um, in mind that anything very glowy, very shiny, very shimmery is going to possibly uh, create a flash issue on camera. Now, I know somebody's going to ask me about MAC foundations. Um, I'd probably say go with the Pro Longwear. Um, the select, uh, the select cover, uh, what is it? Yeah, the select moisture cover concealer as a foundation and as a concealer, uh, or face and body. I would not go with Studio Fix Fluid as I know for a fact that that gives ghost face. So, like I said, as far as being cruelty free goes and vegan, I can totally, totally recommend this to you as far as camera work goes. Because I've worn it as a bridesmaid and as a makeup artist in photos at people's weddings, and I know it translates beautifully. Now, for blush, you're definitely going to want uh, a glow, a gleam. Um, and I don't recommend taking a powder br uh, blush or anything with a high impact of shimmer because it's going to take out that natural glow look. So I'm going to take a little bit of Max Joie de Vivre and the um, replica for this um, is Urban Decay's Glide on Cheek Tint and Crush or you could take NYX Glow, just any peachy creamy pink will do. This is not out of this world. If you want a duplicate of this one because you want to buy from MAC, you can get uh, MAC's Cream Color Va Base in Virgin Isle. It's literally the same color. So we're just going to go ahead and pop that on. Just got a little over here. So just like that, I'm going to add a little bit more of the MAC uh, Spring Shine. Spring Sheen is a blush by MAC. So we're just going to go ahead and add that middle partition color since we're already wearing the cream bronzer. 
This is pretty natural. If you can get any kind of bronzy, beauty powder-esque, anything with a low, low level of color payoff, you're pretty good. Unless you can get like a duo fiber brush and just really control the product well. You don't, you just don't want tons of paint, if you will, on your face for your wedding day. So I'm just gonna go ahead and strike that area where the sun would hit it, strike the cheekbone, and sort of bring back that bronzer that we have in the crease. Now for lips, I'm going to take MAC's Beat Lip Liner, which is already on. It's just this pretty sort of pinky amped up coral. You can take a pinky corally reddish lip liner in any line. I'm going to take a little bit of MAC's Love Forever, just this magenta color. I had bought a few of the Pro Long Wears back in December when they were first launched before I stopped buying from MAC. Uh, it's just this really pretty creamy magenta. You can get a Pro Long Wear in any shade. So just like that. Uh, I know some places or some people will tell you not to wear a, bright, a bold bridal lip, but I think the whole thing for me is to mimic this flower A and then to not do a glossy lip because that's actually what's going to be very unattractive for a wedding. It's just going to dry down to a satin finish, so it going to lock and you're not going to have to worry about getting it on your groom. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look.